So basically done over 300 miles to change a three port valve three times. But yeah, today has just been one of them really stressful days um, and I'm absolutely knackered. So if this video hasn't been great, the best, I apologize, but it's real world plumbing. Right, welcome back to the channel. I am having one of those days. We've all had one of them days where everything just goes a little bit tits up. Well, that's what I'm having today. So let me put you in the picture because I'm a little bit stressed out. I've just pulled up on the side of the road to record the intro for this video. Um, I've just done um, a replacement for a pan and cistern at a flat. And I don't know if I'm going to put the footage in. So I'm going to say to you what I've done. And I may put the footage in after this. Basically, it's for a customer of mine. I do loads of work for it. It's in one of his rental properties. And he said to me, the pan's leaking from the nuts on the back. Um, can you go and fit a new new toilet? So I wanted to get a bog in a box. So I went to Plumbase to get a bog in a box. Cheap replacement. They didn't have one. So I had to go to the other side of town to screw fix to get one. Which added more time onto my day. Um, anyway, I've got there to do this job, took the toilet out, and it's an old three-inch cast iron soil pipe connecting to the back of the pan. So then I've had to go out again and get the fittings to do that. Uh, anyway, it's done now, but it's just stressed me out so much. And then also, just to piss me off even more, I mean, shout out to Dave at Plumbase, because he's given me this for free as a bit of a... Um, just to keep me sweet in a way because that Honeywell valve that I changed twice replaced it with a brand new one 24 hours later it knackered up but it turns out 48 hours after that the heating system in this lad's house was playing up and it's a mate of mine as I said 100 mile round trip to Northampton um, so he, he thought it was a problem with the boiler because it was showing faults on the boiler so he's got Baxi out Baxi have come out because it's the second valve we put in so it's not going to be that He's got Baxi out. The Baxi rep has then, uh, the Baxi engineer has then said, no, it's the three port motorized valve again. So the second brand new one was knackered. So um, I spoke to a few people on Instagram and that's just pissed me off. But that's where I am now. So I'm just on the 100 mile round trip to there. And what's really pissed me off as well is to get off at Northampton where I needed to go. Is a certain junction if you miss that turn in i think it's the longest distance on the m1 between two junctions i think it's 13 mile down and 13 mile back to get to the junction that i should have got off on yet yeah, i fucking missed it didn't i so i've done an extra 25 26 so 125 odd mile to go and change that so i might be rambling a little bit now but it's just really pissed me off and really stressed me out so I'm literally around the corner from Dan's house now. Um, I'm not going to fit another Honeywell valve. Um, fair play to Dave, as I said at Plum Base, he's refunded me for the Honeywell valve and given me this. This is an EPH, uh, EPH D1P three port actuator. Apparently these are a straight swap for the Honeywell heads. So we're going to take this now round to my mate's house. So this will be the third valve that's going on this heating system. So let's hope it's going to work. Um, so a little shout out to Plum Base. Hence why I've worn my Plum Base top as a credit to Dave. So I know he'll be watching. So thanks, Dave. Um, so yeah, I've just had a bit of a shitty day, really. So I'm going to go and do this. So let me take you in and uh, and show you exactly what's going on. You might be able to tell I'm a little bit pissed off. So this little job is replacing this toilet and pan because... As you can see, it's leaking off the bottom of here. I just said to the landlord, it's basically for a, a rental property, as you can probably tell. Um, I said to the landlord, it's probably better to just change the pan and everything all in one go because it's all discolored and whatnot in there. So we're gonna, luckily, there's an isolator up there. So we've got it turned off. We'll whip this out and get the new one in, but this is my own job, so I just wanna get it done. 
because it's not very pleasant at all, but still. Right, let's get this uh, drain down, disconnected and whipped out. And looking at it, it's not even screwed to the wall, so we know that's going to be siliconed on. So chances are it might take the top to be fairly quite solid tile, so hopefully it won't. There's no screws in the pan, so that's going to be either, uh, either siliconed in or cemented in. But yeah, we'll have a look. Right, so that's that pan out. What I've done, I've picked up from Screwfix a bog in a box. I went to Plum Base, but they didn't have one. So I picked one up from Screwfix, and I think they're about 60, 70 quid. Perfect for a replacement for this. I'm going to change that as well. And just this here, I think is like a three inch one, so I might have to shoot off and try and get one of them. But we'll make this up, offer it into position first, and see where we're at with it. Right, that's that pan changed. Uh, I didn't film much of it because I ended up losing the head with it and stressing me out. I had to go off and get bits and go off and get more bits. and So I just cracked on with it. But yeah, that's that done, thank God. And now we can go and get onto something a bit more productive. So here we are for the third time back at this three port motorized valve. Now I always write on the top when I've changed one. The first one we changed was the fourth or the fifth. As I've said before, came back two days later, changed it, 6th of the 5th. And I think Dan reported this one playing, or there was a, the boiler was showing a fault two days after this one had gone in. So, because it was the second one of these, we thought surely it can't be that. Um, so he's got a backseat engineer out to come and have a look at the boiler probably a week later. And what I'll do, I'll add the video in so you can see exactly what the boiler engineer, what the backseat engineer showed to Dan and obviously he sent it over to me. So that was the issue that he was having, which again, pointing to this valve. So, off the back of that, I've put a post on Instagram, loads of people have got at me and said, just bin the Honeywell one off and go for the EPH one. So, picked an EPH one up, a D1P, Apparently these are a direct replacement for the Honeywell one. So what we're gonna do, thank God it's on these just quick connector blocks. So we're gonna disconnect it from here. Heating's off, everything's off. Switch this head out for this one. And hopefully, touch wood, it's gonna alleviate the issue that we're having, or that Dan's having, because it's been an absolute nightmare. And as I've said, it's a massive journey for me to come over and do it, especially when you miss the junction to get off. I have to do that. So let's get this one switched over. So just pop the top off there. Got a screw there, screw underneath there, and then that head will come off. We'll disconnect it from here uh, before we start filling around in there. But yeah, we'll whip that off and get ready to get the next one on. place for that is probably well it will be going back to plumb base so that's what we're left with so apparently this one will tally up and fit straight on so let's have a look at this so the EPH comes with this adapter plate so this adapter plate will just sit so just sits directly on top of the valve there it comes supplied with two screws to just screw in there and there so we'll get them in right, so that's that adapter plate screwed on so just get the power cable and just clip it into the EPH head and then we'll just attach this straight on to the plate that adapts it onto the Honeywell body so to connect it just push the lever open, hold it open into its manual position like so. Make sure the actuator is sitting vertical and then this just clips straight on. If you need to take it off there's just that little button on the top, press it down, pull it off. But yeah, it just sits directly in there. Cable's attached there. So what we'll do now is just wire that up to where are we? That connector block. 
They're all connected back up. Just tuck that there for the moment. Power's onto the valve. Right, let's see what happens. Dan's gonna turn the hot water on and we'll see what's going on. So here we go, pumps come on. Let's check. There's just hot water at the minute. I can feel that going through. Well, today's been one of them days, just draining, properly draining. So I've basically done over 300 miles to change a three port valve three times. Now we went through the EPH one and everything seems to be working as it should. Um, I've got a little concern that the wiring to it might not be correct going into the 10 way box. Now I don't do wiring plus Dan has had a hive system fitted. A company has come out and fitted the hive system to his gravity fed heating system. So it's had to connect the pump, the three port valve, the stats, the cylinder stat, the boiler and all that. And I, there's just something in my head that thinks it's not, something's not talking to something, but He's going to see how we get on with it. Basically, what he can do now is turn his hot water on and let his boiler heat his hot water because it wasn't working before and he was basically been using the immersion heat for five years. So, But yeah, today's just been one of them really stressful days um, and I'm absolutely knackered. So if this video hasn't been great, the best, I apologise, but real world plumbing. <laughs>